Oh yeah, welcome back everybody. Uh, just had to remake the game, not too sure why, but it's going to be AP and some of the heroes we saw, we saw some really great, this is going to be a, a really great game, a lot of gang, I mean especially on the side of energy esports, but then again they're going to have that sneaky scant clinks running around, well hopefully it's scant that picks it up, but I think it might have been, yeah, it's going to be the scant clinks, and uh, we'll wait to get in the game, and then we will talk about the lanes. Uh, you, you, you already said, sorry Harry, Harry you said uh, before the game, what do you think the lanes are going to be like? Yeah, I think it's going to be... Although, it becomes a little bit more difficult to say, but I think it's going to be uh, Shadowfiend solo mid, Darkseer off lane, and then you're going to have uh, Jakiro plus Naga in your safe lane and Enigma in your own jungle. And mm. on the opposing team, but uh, I don't know, I think that's not very, it's not going to be good, the, the jungle Enigma, because I, I have to imagine that uh, Bravado is going to do Clinks the correct way, which is Clinks is going to be in the solo safe lane, you're going to have Storm mid, and then you're going to have a tri lane top, and that tri lane should be pretty strong against Jakiro Naga. Now, the good news is you have Jakiro, who's one of the best counter in the laning phase like, like the opposing team's like oh we're gonna kill you and Jakira's like no I don't think so I Beth. so <laughs> not today yeah I mean there is that but at the same time basically this entire game is going to come down to the team fight of energy versus the ganking of bravado bravado has the clinks plus the storm which is basically designed to pick off energy before they can kind of assemble their death ball and uh, to initiate on their own terms rather than allowing energy to set up the initiation with a vacuum but I think you want to go over the players so I'll let you do that well, I'm just looking because both teams heading towards top, but I'll see how we can go. So Sean Ogle playing the the, the playing the Storm Spirit is going to be like a like a greater than Revo, which is Shanks playing the Sven Nako on the keep of the light. Okay, great, they pause first. They knew we wanted to talk about the heroes. Nantel's playing that Undying, and of course Scant on his favorite little Clinks. Clinks and is playing the Naga Siren. Nothing's nothing new there. Zero on the Darkseer in this game, so not going to be Flares. Flares playing the Jungle League, but not Wingster, who I thought it might be seen. Solo mid Shadow Fiend, that's something we've seen time and time again. And uh, yeah, we're waiting for Wingster to get in there, but Wingster is going to be playing the um, THD. So, looked strange. I thought maybe Flares, but Flares does usually play the jungle. The, no, Flares actually plays. Flares actually plays off, off lane sometimes when, when Rain is around. So we might actually maybe see. A, but then, yeah, I think we might see a jungle uh, Doxian and an off lane and an off lane Enigma. This is, might be a little bit strange of you. We have to wait and see what goes on. And uh, yeah, so. For those of you who don't know, Sean Ogle is uh, is Shanks, and of course, Lucky Greater Than Revo is Let's Get Party. As yep, guys, disconnecting from the game. South Africa and the internet problems. Yeah, it's it's tough to say. I mean, I guess you know the players better than I do. Typically, a five clarities three tangos build is probably a jungle build on Enigma, but at the same time, I mean, clarities are what you need to pull back the lane, so it's really impossible to say. Both of well, them are, yeah. like, I mean, the items for either of them can really go either way. Like, basically, these are the Darkseer items you would grab if you're going in the long lane or if you're going in the jungle, so, I don't know. Hmm. Like, yeah, well, like I said, I do, I do know the players well, but I, I never know with these guys, but Zera does usually play really hard support, but then again, Raiden isn't here, so it's probably going to be an offlane, uh, an offlane Darkseer, so, excuse me, yeah, it is... Yeah, it said five clarities on on flares, but Nako as well, it's gonna be yeah it's gonna be the trial lane, and uh, I'm not too sure what what Shanks is gonna be up to the storm spirit. Maybe ah oh, he's just gonna be mid. Yeah, well yeah that he will go mid probably. Chornogle again yeah actually <laughs> I'm not too sure these guys have all changed up. Uh, sh uh, let's get party on the spin so it's gonna be a seven set but. Undying in a trial lane up against a trial lane or sort of the dual lane top, really, if they're going to have that jungle ending. But that's going to be really, really tough for them, especially engaging and sort of hanging back with that undying decay, which he has taken as level one. And it's, we might see some action over here. Smoked up. Smoked up. Clinton Bernard's heading forward. Chernogel not coming forward. They've got to see a big 5 on 5 gang of it. Stun immediately on Clinton Bernard. not going to get out of this place from time to start. Clinton Bernard's going to drop down first point. Good ass pass, though, by Wings. I'm going to Sean Ogan a little bit of trouble as well. Taking a lot of damage, Flares might drop down as soon. This could be another kill. Double kill for Scant. This is exactly what he needs. Going for Seam has to jump out now. Oh, Wings in a little bit of trouble. Could be another kill for. Oh! 3 0 this early in the game for Bravado. And I guess they kind of ran into this choke right over here. And great, great start for Bravado. They're going to be able to get up. Wow. So they're looking at the, at the gold already. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite crazy I mean, for them. I don't. Uh... 
I don't know why you would engage like that. I mean, if the Jakiro had been up a little bit closer with the damage from Iron Shell, maybe there's a chance of a favorable engagement. But at the same time, I mean, you, they clumped up so much for that Sven stun. Well, not even yeah. that much, but it actually it was just the, the burst damage just took the Naga out before she could do anything. And like, Naga hmm. was like, I'm going to run forward and net someone and then not do anything because I can't actually do anything. I don't know. I don't know what the strategy really were. there was. I guess maybe they didn't expect it to be five. And when the Naga saw someone, she was like, I'm going to net them and we're going to kill them. But it turned out it was five and yeah, not a favorable engagement at all well it is going to be the the sf up against that storm spirit and that sort of lane um harry maybe we'll be inside into that storm spirit versus shadow fiend it's some, not something we see very often but how, how would that how would that lane favor uh well the lane really well it normally should favor the the shadow fiend a little bit um he has a, a slightly better animation than Storm Spirit, and as soon as he gets a couple levels, he's going to really get into the last hitting advantage. But the Storm, as soon as he gets six, can actually just kill the Shadow Fiend. Um, and yeah. at the same time, the uh, Ezlor is actually going to make life pretty difficult for the Shadow Fiend. Although, speaking of life being difficult, Ezlor is actually going to be a little bit of trouble here, but Flares actually is going to need to get a conversion. No, actually, he's just... Uh, I think he might win this fight. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Nacor is actually... Classic, wait, this is going to be close. It's actually song. going to be uh, Nacor... They're both going to die. Oh, he's going to oh, die! No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was epic to watch. It is gonna be Nako who takes the final hit. Classic smackdown. Just above, just below, sorry, the small camp there in the jungle. Uh, that was pretty epic. And <laughs> Zero, I'm not really used to playing the offlane, but then again, most of the players in this sort of league can handle an offlane quite easily and could really match up to the Flares offlane, that's the question. Well, basically all he needs to do at this point is kind of just uh, hang around the lane a little bit and make sure that he's getting experience. Like, the fact that Klinks is pushing him all the way off the lane right now is not good for him. He really needs to... I mean, Klinks is level 3 and he's level 1. That really should never happen. I mean, Klinks can't actually kill you, so mm. there's really no reason for you to be so scared because you just have to get enough experience to get level 3 and then you can start creep skipping. It's a little bit difficult yeah. to creep skip at level 1. Uh, level 1 Iron Shell is just not going to do enough. So he's going to keep Iron Shelling the creep wave and he just kind of, yeah, he's got to hang off over to the side here. This is a little bit better, I guess. And uh, Klinks is going to try to do his best to deny the creeps, but as long as he gets some experience, he should be fine. Yeah. Well, he's letting Zero come a little bit forward over here, but he's going to try to harass him a little bit with the fire arrows. And oh, could this be the answer to the harassment? But there shouldn't be too 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 much of a hard end. Oh, stun on number wing. And could this be another gun to Kato and down as well? Ice path. Oh, there comes the Colonel from the side. A little bit expected and a kill for Nine Tails. 5 and 0 at the moment. Things not really going the way of energy esports. Maybe riding, a, they should be riding on the confidence of the win over TNT, but struggling a little bit at the moment as Flares still just farming up in the jungle. And uh, so you say level 3, maybe a little bit of creeps, creeps giving, but you said earlier in the first game that Klinks is one of those heroes that can handle it under the tower, handle the pressure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he should have no problem with it. So, I mean, uh, it's a pretty favorable matchup for Clink. Well, all right, it's not a favorable matchup, but it's, like, as good as you can get against Darkseer, which is basically yeah. the best offlane hero in the game. Uh, it's just Iron Shelling... Well, I, I don't know. I mean, he's got to start claritying out, but the problem is if he clarities up, he's not going to be able to stand near the creep wave now. So he's just going to hopefully get level 3 on this wave. No, he's actually searching out. I, I don't know. I feel like he could have played this one a little bit better, but at the same time, I guess Gant just has such a large advantage from those uh, three kills early on uh, yeah. that maybe it just makes well, it too difficult kill for the well. Darkseer. Yeah. I mean, exactly. Boots and Aquila so, at three minutes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's pretty insane. So I don't know. I mean, I guess it's a difficult situation to be in. But the problem is the Darks here. He's going to be able to creep skip now, but he doesn't have any mana. I mean, he's going to be able to. Uh, I guess he'll be able to do two Iron Shells um, if he clarities. The, yeah, this clarity is going to continue to run, so he will be able to get two Iron Shells, which should be enough to carry him to his Soul Ring. So I guess he'll be fine in the end. Uh, he's just going to need a Flying Courier at some point, which they're going to need to upgrade. The problem is that well, the Jakiro actually Jakiro is at two twenty gold now, so Jakiro I assume will be upgrading that Flying Courier uh, immediately, and then yeah, Darks will be fine. Uh, meanwhile, though. Uh, Storm Sphere putting more pressure on this Shadow Fiend mid, doing basically what you need to do with Storm Sphere, which is kind of keep the pressure up on the Shadow Fiend as much as possible. If you turn it into a last hitting war, Shadow Fiend's obviously going to win with the high base damage he gets from the souls. Oh, but Naga's going to die in time. Yeah, Naga's going to drop to top. And maybe a little bit of damage out by Wingster as well. But wow, 6 0 oh, this early in the game. I mean, the gold graph as well, already heading towards 3000 for Bravado. And that's, qu that's quite substantial for four minutes into the game. But look what Zero's doing over He's pulled the creeps all the way back to his tower. Uh, and I I've, I've, I've watched Zero play. I've sat behind him while he played. And his last hitting is not the best under the tower. But I'm actually wrong. He's not doing too bad over here. Picking up three, four, three, four creeps out of the wave. So 
good for him, and he actually pulled yeah, pulled the creeps all the way back to his tower, so maybe just being a little bit too scared to sit in lane with that Quattle sort of running around and blasting things from left, right, and center. And Seam picks up an Illusion Rune, and maybe that's one of the things that Seam has to really work on right here, is maybe controlling all the runes as hard as he can, stopping the Storm Spirit, because if his Storm Spirit picks up like a double damage summit at level 6, you, like you said, he can kill, you can kill the, the um, Shadow Fiend really nice and quickly, sort of just jump onto the back of him and sort him out. Yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty easy to control runes against the Storm. Storm doesn't have the capacity to nuke down the creep waves. That I mean, neither of them have a mobility ability like Queen of Fane, which makes it really easy to control creep wave, or control yeah. the runes. So it really just comes down to who can kill the creep wave faster. But actually, it looks like there was going to be action at the Naga top, but I guess not. But so yeah, it's just going to come down to who can kill the creep wave faster. And Shadow Fiend definitely has the advantage with that. With at the advantage at that with level 3 raises. So he really shouldn't have too much difficulty with that. The problem is going to come at the next rune. If he tries to go for it, uh, there should be... Well, basically, if it's a top rune, he just basically has to give it up. Because if he goes mm. for a top rune against the level 6 storm, he the supports should rotate from Bravado and actually just kill him. Because actually, the supports don't need to stay really in the lane. I mean, Sven has enough of advantage now. Well, he's actually gone for Soul Ring, which is rather interesting when you have a an Ezlor on your team. Usually, you know, Ezlor plus Sven, you're like, ah, I've got all the mana I need. I don't need to buy any ridiculous items like Soul Ring. I would expected him just to have treads by now, but he still almost got those. So, like, a tread Sven isn't going to die to this Naga Jakiro unless the Enigma rotates, but they've got enough ward coverage that they know the Enigma's not rotating. So, yeah, you can see the Ezlor actually heading over here now. I guess he's actually going for the Enigma. No, he's going to go for the top rune. So, it is a DD top, and if, yeah, Shadowfiend were to go for that, he would just die. So, instead, maybe he'll deny it with the illusion. Nope. No. Storm actually jumps all the way to it. And uh, yeah, grabs up the rune, so that'll help him pick up some of the farm as we look at, at the Sven and Klink's leading at the moment. You know, if you're playing, in a, in a, especially in an offlane with Sven, and you're leading the farm, you know, you're doing something right. And Klitz is trading behind a little bit, only 15 CS. That's not something, I could say, that's not one thing Klitz likes to happen. Uh, but at the same time, I just, I just saw what happened as uh, Klink's chased down Docs here earlier. Got a couple uh, of hits off the as well. Uh, the Shadow Fiend might drop down there. We can see a jump forward with a double damage rune. Out of mana though, is he going to go forward? Follows up, well played by Seam to get out of that one. And here comes Flares in from the side with, this, with the conversions as well. Getting the stun, but now Seam needs to be careful. He, whoa, good raise by Seam. Picking up the kill. I was just waiting for the Chakra Magic back onto, um, back onto, which is Sean Ogle, back onto Shank so he could jump forward. And, sorry, let's get potty. No, that is Shank, sorry. Oh, I hate when these guys change their nicknames. I don't know why they do it. Anyway. I was waiting for the Chakra Magic for him to jump forward and maybe pick off Seam, and maybe even the Enigma as well. Yeah, that was... Uh, I don't know. Oh, whoa, actually, Darkseer just trying to go in on the Clinks here, and thinks better of it after the Clinks pops Medallion on the Darkseer. But basically, oh, there's a lot of drawing on the map from uh, Ezlor. I think there's a little bit of miscommunication there, because a situation like what just happened should never happen. I mean, first of all, yeah, yeah. the Storm should have had a little bit more mana, maybe he should have been a little bit more cautious, but when you have level 2 Chakra on your support who's coming with you to gank, like, that should be up. Like, it's just basically, it's the same principle as... In, like casting a stun on a creep before you go to gank someone, you would never do that. It's the same thing with Chakra when you have a Storm who's trying to kill the Shadow Fiend. So like, as soon as he ran out of mana, this uh, Chakra should have come out on Storm and they should have killed that SF mm. with a DD rune. So that was kind of a wasted opportunity. Looks like they're going... Oh no. Jakiro just being really jump. aggressive. It's strange to see a support being that aggressive and burning away his mana when they're up against, you know, well, not a tri lane anymore, I guess. But he, I mean, if if they could just go on uh, the Naga now, they would be in a lot of trouble. Ooh. But it looks like actually they're going to go for the Enigma instead, and this is, well, maybe with this TPing scene, not a dead Enigma. I don't think it's there, but there's the tomb down as well. Those zombies took a lot of damage. But look at the damage put out by Seam with these raises. Now, oh, Scan picking up a kill as well. The bottom of the dark there while we're watching the action top. And, uh, yeah, you'll get back. Sven will get away nice and easy. And one thing you said why he would go Sol Ring if there's a um, Cottle on the map. But he is sort of roaming. Nako is moving around a lot, being very mobile, moving between lanes. So I guess that's why he kind of wandered the mana. And that would have been a great game, but good TP response there by Seam. He makes his way back towards middle with a full bottle as well. And he's. Well, 34, 35 CS at the moment. Oh, Blast could do a little bit of damage over here. Jumps forward. Blast gonna hit him right at the last second. Pulled back. Does he have a remnant? He does. And this is gonna be the end of Seam. Picked up by Shanks. <laughs> Yeah, we, we actually see something from the, the Storm Spirit, which is a little bit uncommon, actually, with four points in Electric Vortex. Typically, as a Storm Spirit, you're only going to get three points in Electric Vortex, um, because mm. actually, uh, with three points in Electric Vortex, it's actually a long enough pull that if you use the Remnant, basically, right after you hit them from the static, or from the Overlord, from the yeah. uh, pull, you will actually still uh, pull them into the Remnant, basically. So, it's unusual that you go for four points, but in this situation, it kind of makes sense, because first of all, you've got um, Tombstone, which the longer things are around, the more damage they're going to take, but more specifically, because of the Ezelor. Because being able to hold them just a little bit longer could be the difference between hitting Illuminate or not, which is why he's actually yeah. decided to go for the max level of uh, Electric Vortex. And it uh, looks like there is going to be an Invis Storm Rotating oh. up here. 
Sorry, I was busy watching bottom over there. This guy just sort of picked off Zero before he could even get away. But there is an invisible storm spray. He said moving, to moving towards top. Oh, we can see that vortex with the pool. But now he's level six, so if he wants to, he can get out of this untouched. But I think they know something's up. As uh, Cottle will never be this aggressive. And here comes Nine Tails around from the side as well. Winks a little bit of trouble running up towards these trees. Uh, he could could die. I mean, you know. Undying is one of those heroes which makes it very easy to dive with because with the with the K and Soul Rip. But they're gonna catch on flares in the jungle. There's a ward down over there, so you might actually spot out Nako sitting over there, getting a blast off as well. Are we gonna see a jump forward? They run out of the range of the blast, it's gonna go through, but there are a lot of heroes stop and oh miscommunication over here as Shanks jumps away. Stun as well, net on top of it, jumps away. Could we see a black hole over here by Flares? Doesn't have enough mana. Has got a soul ring though, pulls Nine Tails back with the vacuum slow as well on Nine Tails. This could be a little bit problem that doesn't have his does have his ultimate, sorry, puts down the tunes on level three. Might need to put his ultimate up. Is he gonna put no, might be a drop over here. Oh, he hates Clip and a little bit of miscommunication over there. You might not be able to catch him now. He's charging forward, picks up the kill, this docks here, but here comes Soul Spreading from the side. Flares are gonna drop down over here for sure. Nako picks up the kill, no problem. And it's a one for one trade on the Enigma as well as the Undying. But Storm not done. Once he's out of as well, Chakra Magic giving him full mana as well. The Doxy is there. <laughs> he tries to put an Iron Shell on himself. Thought it was put on one of the Eidolons. And, uh, well, one for one trade. I'm not too sure if it was, it was exactly fair. No, but, well, I mean, it'll do. That 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 wasn't the problem. The problem is just the the clinks. This was, I mean, the last time we casted one of the games, there was the scant clinks, which just completely took over the game, and the exact same thing's going to happen here. Oh, actually, spotted at the same time, and Storm's oh. actually going to jump in here. They are going to catch the Shadow Fiend. The Shadow Fiend should be going down. I don't think there's any way he can escape this. No. no. What, is he, what was he bringing to himself, though? It looks like he's got he's bringing his magic wand. Nope. Brought in the treads actually, so got treads on in time. No, no, he, he already had the no, treads no, no. before that. It was Did actually he? just his uh, magic stick. Was it his magic stick coming in? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, he actually, I guess he kind of mismanaged the courier a little bit, because, well, I guess he was just going to drop one of the iron branches and grab the stick, because he actually had the rest mm. of the wand in his stash. Maybe That's he bought that before dying, um, rather than actually having it before the courier came out. But, yeah, looking really bad for uh, energy, because, like I said, I mean, oh, and Sven, actually, yeah, well, he's just going to throw out a storm hammer. I guess he's got the, the soul ring, which we talked about, so he doesn't really mind yeah, the wasting magic. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and the chakra magic. And the arcane boots. <laughs> Yeah, they're really supporting that Sven mana-wise, huh? I mean, Arcane Boots on Ezlor is extremely uncommon. Normally, you'd just see the Tranquil Boots for the movement scene. And another uncommon thing on Ezlor, he actually doesn't have any points in his ultimate at level 6, which I, I don't agree with, because you have a Storm. Like, Storm, like, if in a fight like what the the one that happened top a little bit ago, where Storm runs out of mana, like, trying to either kill people or get away from people, and then he can just, yeah. like, TP back to base, and then you can immediately recall him at full mana, mm. like, basically Aegis Storm. So, mm, I would like that. Although, at the same time, with the way they're using Illuminate along with Stormhammer, it's a pretty effective combination. Oh, oh. And uh, start on the creeps instead of the heroes trying to jump right past somewhere. They try to clear the creeps up so they can maybe push down the first tier 1 tower of the game. And to the strange, I'll jump on C middle as well. Look at the damage output from, from Shanks, and that is going to be a killing spree for him. And, you know, as a Storm... As, as a storm, I think that's the best you can want, really, this early in the game with the killing spree. Going for an immediate orchid as well, and you did say that storm will be the hero to sort of sort out the um, to sort out the the gagging of energy esports. Can't remember the exact words you use. Maybe you can well, refresh I, I would everyone's say memory. En energy esports, we wouldn't say is ganking team. They're a, a team sorry, fighting team. Team fight. They, yeah, sorry, yeah, that's yeah. what I meant. The team fight. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. The idea is that they they want to put the initiation on their own terms by having mm. Storm jump in or having the Clinks, who has an orchid, basically pop the orchid on someone and start going. Because yeah. if, if if it's ever the case that. Uh, basically energy can initiate on their own terms with the Naga ultimate, then there's really going to be a lot of trouble. But they actually do the right oh. thing here, Bravado. They actually Nacle. split and yeah, just... Yeah, yeah, yeah caught Nacle. way out of position. <laughs> well, it wasn't so much that he was caught out of position. It was actually the three of them were kind of in the this position here together, where I'm looking at with the camera right now. I guess I can yeah. actually draw on the minimap, can't I? You can, um, you I'm can. I'm so bad at drawing. They were, well, that was a terrible illustration because I basically just showed the entire lane. But anyway, they were <laughs> they were kind of all in that position right there, and the, the Surge came forward, which is level 2 Surge on the Naga. So they knew that the Naga was going to catch some with the ult, so they actually just sacrificed Nagor. But speaking of getting caught by the Naga, oh. actually, I'm dying a little bit far forward. There's going to have to be TPs coming out here, but no. Well, Clint of Bernardo's getting a clean spree as well, which is what he needed, and Flair's dropping down to the tower, and like a, oh, sorry, that is Lithia Party, oh, getting some damage coming down to be a pops off his ultimate guard strength, gonna sort out Clint Bernardo's as well, goes down again to the tower, two heroes down to the tower there, Zero has to retreat as well, the zombies chasing down, here comes another kill, dominating streak as well as Shanks, the brothers, sorting out pretty much the whole of energy esports, four heroes down over there on top of that tier one tower, so, Great gang, great sorry, great gang over there for Bravado, and still showing 16-5 at the moment. This, you know, this can't be going better for them. 
Yeah, it, it was kind of the exact same thing that we saw from uh, from TNT, actually, in the last game yeah. against Energy, and the Energy does the exact same thing. They just kind of <laughs> overstayed their welcome. Like, uh, diving undying underneath a, a tower is almost never a good idea, but I was actually wrong. There were no TPs that came out, so it wasn't immediately punished, but then they hung around to try to kill the Tombstone. When they, If they had actually just backed off, they would have been fine. The reason why that was such an unfavorable fight for them is because they actually ate an Illuminate while fighting Tombstone, which is basically the worst yeah. thing ever, because then all of a sudden the zombies were like, oh, we're really hungry now. And <laughs> I, I, I don't understand why they would do that. I mean, uh, they had to know that there would blood. eventually be support coming in. And actually, it looks like they're going to be going here on the, the Naga again. Naga still has, does still have her ultimate, but she's going to die before she can even get it off. Yeah, that's a great fight there. Sean Ogler once again getting in. Grab your clips of bananas. Chakra magic used on him to get his mana back to scratch. And, oh, we have to back up over here as a Wingster uses a little bit of damage to sort of shift them back a bit, but... Let's get party moving forward and a nice creep wave for Neko. Neko picked up that tower and as well picking up about four creeps in that wave, so he should have his mechanism. Yep, mechanism almost ready and the 300 gold needed. At the same time, Scant is actually soloing uh, Roche. Well, now he's decided better of it. He actually got Roche to half <laughs> HP, but uh, wasn't able to finish it off. He's actually, I guess, just going to go death pact another well, creep, lost. and I presume he'll go back. And the Blast is as well on top of Flares and the on the Dark Seas, but no jump. Off. Yeah, I guess the plan is to get them down to half HP and then Shanks come in from the side as a storm spread and pick off one or two heroes. I think he's got his Orchid up now as well. Uh, yep, he does, flying off to him. Mm, orchid of Malevolence. Orchid. Actually, I, pra I practiced that one. M orchid <laughs> of Malevolence. So, <laughs> orchid up, stun as well, and taking down Enigma and Nine. You get up here. That's what I said. The blast coming through, putting Enigma on low HP, and then let's get Party coming through and just sorting him out. Wingster doing a lot of the hard warding this game. Got a couple of sentries as well as his normal observer wards on him and Orchid's up and Cliss taking a solo Rashad has got a medallion Orchid and his Ring of a Killer. He's had a fantastic game. 16 minutes. I think you can't ask for better as a Clinks. No, and the double Orchid, it really is going to be a very effective strategy against this kind of Naga initiation. The goal is to have the Naga get like surged in, run in, and uh, throw out an ult, which then can set up the Dark Seer vacuum into Black Hole. But with double Orchid, the Naga is never going to survive to actually get that off. Yeah. And she's got nothing. I mean, uh, I assume her next item will probably be a Vitality Booster because she just needs that health so badly. I mean, she's sitting at under 1,000. Actually, they're going to jump on her right now. Oh, taken out by Sean Ogle move forward. Good double stun on top of the macro pyre though. So are they gonna go after this? They are gonna suction forward vacuum and wow. Monster kill for Scant and this is sort of a repeat of last week as Scant just absolutely dominates and this is gonna be a tier two tower top for Bravado showing that they are a force to be reckoned with in South African esports and <laughs> Using up that, they're using up that massive mana regen, you know, just to farm so many creep waves and push so hard. At the same time, see middle, trying to pick off what he has left. 1,300 gold up on him. Oh, oh, Sean Ogle looking for the, looking for something there on seam as he tries to TP away. Yeah, what would have been really ballsy by the Shadow Fiend would be to try to take the tower and then TP out. Uh, Ogle actually wouldn't have been able to catch him because he didn't have enough mana for Vortex anyway. But, yeah, I mean, he had no way of knowing exactly how far away they were, so it was a smart idea to TP. And he actually t he stopped just in time. The tower is actually not in deny range, so it's not going to get lost. But he's going to have a lot of trouble as, yeah, Clinks is just going oh, to blow Klinks. him up. <laughs> no problem, Clinks takes him down. <laughs> It's it's just so naughty just to run up behind someone and just take them out like that. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that off the game. I saw something on the screen over there when the when the when the storm spirit put down his static remnant. There was something that said like massive like error on the screen in the middle end. And if you see, I don't know if you can see where I'm drawing, but you'll see in the vod hopefully. There was like a big thing that said like error on the screen. It was a bit strange. Anyway, so Clinks being disgusting and jumping up, taking towers, taking heroes like it's absolutely no problem. Yeah, and he's going for, uh, I'm not really sure if he's going to go for a Daedalus or an MKB. My guess would be MKB to try to interrupt the, uh, well, then again, Enigma's not going to have a black, or, yeah, BKB anytime soon, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Either of those choices is really going to be fine, and I assume he'll probably go for a Daedalus, oh, just because it's more fun. But, wow. uh, yeah. Stop spreads. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, there's not really a lot to say about this. Basically, Bravado's plan worked to perfection. They're able to keep picking off energy and not allow them to get up the farm they need to kind of death ball up and actually just force a, a fight down Bravado's throat. So, mm. I don't know. I mean, Bravado just perfectly executed. Energy, not quite so well executed. Part of it comes down to the Darkseer. Darkseer against uh, against Clinks should have a much easier time than what actually happened. I mean, he really got shut down. I guess, like I said, I mean, it would be kind of unfair of me to blame him completely if you don't consider the fact that they did lose three kills right away top, which I 
guess it all yeah. com comes down to that. Which again, as we talked about previously, in in the kind of well, we, I, maybe we were talking about it in between games, or it was actually on the VOD. I'm not really sure, but how one little decision can completely change yeah. the outcome of the game. And that fight to op, those three deaths. I mean, it's so hard to come back from something like that when you have two solo against solo lanes. Like it's it's kind of a different story if you're facing like tri lane against solo and tri lane against solo because you're not gonna have a lot yeah. of interaction. Oh. Sven! It's even on this. Look at the Sven with the BKB roaring through here. Yeah, he's people his mouth, doesn't jump out instead. But <laughs> Scat makes sure of the takedown. And jumping through it to three heroes. Flair's gonna drop out as well. This could maybe do good wall down though. Two heroes. Seen picks up a kill as well. But now a little bit of trouble. Ultimate used by the Undying. Send a chase right into the tower. But Scant is trying to pick off Zero and does godlike with an ultra kill. Four kills with Scant. Immediate buyback as well by the Storm Spirit. And oh, well, this GG call by Clitzy Bananas. And uh, we're going to go to game two. So, yeah, as you're saying about the three kills in the top lane of the early game, that I think that really gives the team the momentum they need to sort of just carry out what exactly what Bravado did right here. They carried out so well and they rode on that momentum the whole game. As you said, picking off heroes left, right, and center. But as the whole of uh, Energy Esports leave the game, uh, we should see the score screen come up soon. And Harry, any last thoughts on the game? No, it was just the, I kind of wanted to finish my thought, which was basically that if you're if you're going tri lane against solo and tri lane against solo, there's not a lot of interaction early on. It's basically just yeah. people trying to hang out and get experience while people farm. And in a situation like that, giving up three kills right away might not be such a big deal. But when you're going solo against solo, solo against solo, and then tri lane against dual lane plus jungle, having that early advantage is just so paramount. So yeah, I really think that was a big decider in the game, uh, and it kind of led to this clinks getting out of control. But yeah, either way, good game by <laughs> out both of teams. Control. <laughs> yeah, bit of an understatement. He was, he was great. And uh, it's fine. Well, that's basically it. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll see a better showing by Energy Esports in the next game. Thanks for watching, guys.